What's up guys, it's Hotline 7 RCT bringing you another video for you guys and this video right here is going to be a basically a six month after the fact update of the Vega 56, the Ares Strix model from Aces that I unboxed around late March and that you guys had a very good um, you know reaction to it. Um, many of you left questions and expressed, you know, the desire to know more about the card and if it was worth it or not and I really appreciate that because we got a chance to interact so I'm really really um, grateful for that I'm hoping that this video can also help anybody who has doubts or are dealing with certain issues which I'm going to talk about um, very shortly is that I am going to a situation right now where I feel that my power supply is starting to give up Yep, the power supply that I have, which is this right here, Silent Pro Gold from Cooler Master, is beginning to lose its edge and I think it's about to go. Um, why I bring this up? Well, you know, it has to do with the reason why I did this video to begin with. I've been noticing since maybe a week, a week and a half before I recorded this video that my system, my PC, is just shutting off no blue screen no nothing it just turns off in the middle of a game or something graphically intensive it just goes out of course when you start uh, thinking back what could be wrong uh, the power supply is one of the first things that come up that you have to think and in my case uh, even more so because at the time where it would shut down I would um, run and inspect the insides to see that everything's okay and when I go to touch the power supply it's extremely hot. So yes, this is a sign that the power supply is starting to give out because you know it's either activating one of its security measures that this one has and uh, you know it's a great possibility. So I started looking more into it and I'm still dealing with that as we speak that being said I wanted to get that out of the way that is what made me go into a little deeper in the inner workings of what was going on with my PC currently um, I got to the conclusion that even though the power supply seems to be doing this there's also the fact that the card is starting to get extremely hot now that's not a thing that I had way in the beginning and most of you guys express you know that that could happen but I have a few things that I want to get out of the way first number one as I said in this video in the you know on the thumbnail and stuff I got a solution to it that doesn't require the assembly it doesn't require you to change the thermal pads which I know is the go-to thing to do for many people who purchase the card first time around. Now I'm here to say that can work but is a double-edged you know sword in this case because it can improve your situation but it also can worsen it. How? Because if you don't do not apply you know enough thermal paste or if your pads are not good enough or if they're even you know not properly aligned when you put it back it could worsen the whole situation and I've seen it happen I've seen people do this and have even worse temperatures than what they had in the beginning now is it a good idea yes it's a good idea something that you can do and you're able to do and if, if you feel confident enough to do it go ahead and do it however leave it as a last ditch effort to fix a problem you know with the temperatures don't do not do it right away there are other ways and that is the point of this video now in order to do that I need to show you also in the beginning back in the beginning when I got the card I noticed I noticed that the temperatures were, were going up there you know in the 94 degrees that's pretty hot that's pretty hot however I took into consideration that this is Final Fantasy 15 with all the set settings basically maxed out on 4K, I am pushing the card to its limits. So I figured at that time, you know, this is something that's gonna happen only under extreme conditions. 
so I didn't think too much of it. And to be honest, up until now, it hasn't been giving me these temperatures. It's a recent thing. However, it's an issue that needs to be solved. Now, one of the things that I did here, when I started noticing that, you know, the shutoffs and stuff like that, I started getting, I have to confess, a little paranoid. And what I did was I ran a, um, a benchmark using the game for Honor, which, by the way, it's, for some reason, Ubisoft has it free. Uh, during this week, I don't know why, but I downloaded it. Hey, free is good. And I did some tests and I run the benchmark tool that it has in game. And look at this, guys 105. That is, and 103, the hotspot. That is too high. Extremely high. It's having the draw that it needs. And it's actually running, you know, pretty high up there, the GPU clock, but this is too much. However, I noticed something particular, which leads right into my solution. I noticed that the GPU fan was running only at 1600 RPMs, meaning that it was running basically half speed. And that kind of bugged me because at this point, at this temperature, these fans are supposed to be running like full throttle just to bring this down. So, what I did was, basically all you need in order to um, solve this is, of course, you need the AMD settings. And, of course, you go into Wattman, because Wattman is a key here, and you have one or two options. Either you go with the auto undervolt, which is what I have right now, or you go manual and you set up everything to undervolt it. Now, this is something that I'm going to leave some settings for undervolting if you want to do it manually. But a warning to you guys out there. My settings are not necessarily going to work the same way on your rigs. There's too many variables. There's too many things. We use different cases. We use different processors. We use different things. So you need to tweak and mess around with this until you find the perfect one. But... Basically, to sum it up, undervolting does help a lot with the issues of temperatures and even improves performance. Yes, it does. In running another, you know, just running some settings in undervolting and improving basically the settings and making them a bit better, tweaking them a bit better using undervolting with the card running the same benchmark look at these temperatures now but ah, ah, ah there's something here that i'm not mentioning even though the undervolting is giving a lot less compared to what i had the first time around which is this one right here which is hot 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 as you can see the power draw is way lower than it was in this case However, even though the power draw is less with the undervolting, the GPU clock is much higher. This one goes all the way, I mean, it's not, it's 35 megahertz at one point, but you get what I'm saying. It's still running faster and with less current. And of course, the temperature aspect, which the final clue here to make it all, you know, tie in together is basically uh, an application that comes with the card some of you know some of you don't know but if you don't know right is this opening twice okay one second guys okay there we go now with this sucker right here some of you can use afterburner if you want if you don't you know like messing around with this one but this one comes with the card so you can go right ahead and do it what i notice is that this comes standard in gaming mode you can put it in, in oc mode and you can put it in silent mode so you don't hear the fans and stuff like that and that's gonna tweak and turn around the graphics card to do certain things at certain times however by having it in gaming mode 
I noticed that it's the reason why my fans are staying at an RPM just so it doesn't make noise and this is not acceptable so what you do to change that is you basically you go into profile go into professional mode here and create your own profile a profile that allows you to up the speed of the fans like here I created this profile called it uh, fan up and just basically it, it, it is like the name it just brings to a higher point the fan speed and by doing this you can have adjust you know depending on the temperatures that you get I recommend it to keep it between 80 and 90 93 no more than that and once you have the profile you activate it and that's it this is the result of that now I'm gonna be running some um, leaving you here with some um, benchmarks um, so you can see it in action how I actually did it with uh, for honor and I threw in a, a, a superposition one that I did as well but this is night and day guys and I didn't have to open the card at all so you go ahead you let me know what you feel about this um, have you checked if your fans are activating the way they're supposed to this is I don't know if this is an oversight or something that's wrong with the GPU tweak app or something on software side but once I fixed this I corrected this to have the fans work the way they're supposed to no more problems with temperatures I mean I'm running everything I'm recording this and I'm doing the stuff that I'm doing and it's still you know keeping a very good temperature I have actually the application right here to show you guys this is the current one right here and as you can see the current temperatures are very nice you know everything is working perfectly it's even running see the video encoding stuff because of course I'm, I'm recording but yeah everything is working great guys so you give it a try if you're having issues with temperature and this specific car the value 56 it doesn't matter if it's the Ares uh, Strix card or not if you have a power cutter or whatever try doing this maybe you can do it if you don't have GPU tweak you can do it then with afterburner there are many software out there as long as you have this for monitoring this which is free and of course you go into Wattman and you set it to, to auto undervolt I recommend going with auto because auto does enough for you to see the results and be stable at the same time for you to run everything without having to worry and go back and change it again now I will leave the settings that I have for mine for the manual undervolt but you pick and choose is up to you I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'm gonna leave you here with uh, running these um, benchmarks and to sum it up guys I really do love the card even though I have to change my power supply eventually but it has nothing to do with the card it's just that the you know power supply is pretty old almost nine years with me and it's this is like the third build it's been in so I can't ask for more on that side so let me know what you think guys uh, leave uh, comments down below and please like and subscribe and I will check you guys out later peace